Let's take a look at working out times. So you might have to work out how long a journey takes and it's worth doing this as a timeline. So if a train leaves at 8.50 and arrives at 16.25, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write 8.50, 16.25. So what I'm gonna look for is full hours between these two times. So um, what I mean is between 8.50, the next full hour is nine o'clock. And for 16.25, what is the nearest full hour going back in time? So um, approaching the 8, 8.50, and that's gonna be 1600. 8.50 to nine o'clock, that's a difference of 10 minutes. 1600 to 16.25 is a difference of 25 minutes. And between nine and 16 hours, that is a difference of seven hours. So therefore the, the total difference between 8.50 and 16.25 is gonna be seven hours plus 25 plus 10 minutes. So that's seven hours and 35 minutes. It's really important that you look for full hours that are between 8.50 and 16.25. So nine and 1600. If you go backwards to eight o'clock and forwards to 1700, then that is just going to turn the question into a complete mess. You're trying to just narrow narrow the gap, basically. Let's have a look at another example. So Gary is 11 years and eight months. So I'm going to write 11Y8M and Steve is 18 years and two months. So again, I'm just looking for a full number of years in this case um, that is between these two values. So 11 years and eight months, I'm gonna, the next one up is 12 years. And the next one down from 18 years and two months is 18 years. So what is the gap between 11 years and eight months and 12 years? Well, remember that there are uh, 12 months in a year, not 10. So therefore that is a gap of four months and 18 years to 18 years, two months. Well, that's nice and easy. That is a gap of two months. What's the gap between 12 years and 18 years? Well, that is a gap of six years. So therefore the total gap between 11, eight and 18, two is gonna be four months plus two months, which is six months and six years. So therefore that is gonna be the gap of six years and six months.